Hello, and welcome to the Creative Toolbox. My name is Shane Semler, and this is the show where I share with you tips and techniques for making the most of your creative software. This time, we'll be talking about why it's a good idea to keep the GIMP around even if you have Photoshop. Let's take a look. Ah, Photoshop versus GIMP, the age-old debate. Which is better? Well, I think that the wise uh, artist uh, uses the best tool for the job. For me, that tool is usually Photoshop. So why in the world would I keep GIMP around if I'm perfectly happy with Photoshop? Well, the thing is, is that GIMP, I think, actually complements Photoshop more than it can serve as a replacement. Now, Photoshop does have some nice non-destructive layer tools like drop shadows and things like that The GIMP doesn't have. But as far as the scripts that come with GIMP or that you can download, there's some really, really cool scripts that can do some amazing stuff that Photoshop just can't do. So let's have a look. The first plugin I'm going to show you is a very useful for creating seamless tiles, and it's built right into GIMP. It is under Map, and there it is, Make Seamless. Now, this texture here that you see in the background is uh, just a dirt texture I downloaded off of cgtextures.com. It is untiled. So I want to tile it. Sure, I could, you know, I could split it up and move it around and erase and, and, and uh, blend and all that stuff. Or I could just go to Filters, Map, Make Seamless, and bam, there you go. You have a seamless texture. Now, there is a caveat, and that is, is that it works great on textures like this that have a very fine grain. What it doesn't work so hot on are bigger, lumpier textures. Uh, let me show you an example. Here's another texture I downloaded off of CG Textures. And this is uh, pretty chunky. Let me flatten it. It's a big, big stones. If I do use a Make Seamless on it, yeah. Mm, like if, if this was smaller, if this was like 256 by 256, you could probably get away with it. But at higher resolutions, you know, uh, 1024, 2048, yeah, it doesn't work so good. So let's undo that. But if you just need a quick, dirty, seamless tile, you really, you really can't do any better than, than, than map, and it costs you nothing. So I highly recommend GIMP for that. If nothing else, if nothing else, it's worth downloading GIMP just for that. But there's another even more useful tool that you can download for GIMP. It's a separate download, doesn't come with GIMP. Now there is a uh, nice uh, piece of software out there that actually isn't too expensive. Uh, it's like 99 US dollars, it's called Crazy Bump. And you know, that's all fine and good, but sometimes $99 is 99 more dollars than you actually have to spend. And Honestly, this works really, really well. Uh, this doesn't really tell you much. You know, it shows you, you can set like the quality and the scale and things like that. Here's what really shows you what is going on. This is the 3D view. And you can see, you can choose different, um, the best one I find is, is Sphere. Sphere works really good. Let's move the light off to one side. And there we go. That is our normal map. Uh, we can bump up the scale if you want to really see it. Um, normally, I just leave it at four uh, because you could usually, uh, like for example, I use Blender. In Blender, you can adjust the scale in Blender. Uh, so, but I guess if you just wanted to, you know, make sure that it came out really well, you could bump that up to eight. But like I said, I just usually leave it at, at uh, four. Um, you can see how it's tiling down here. And yeah, so 
let's hit OK. There, we have the normal map version. So, yeah, again, it costs you absolutely nothing. I think it's it puts out uh, as good a quality as anything you can get with the Crazy Bump. And, yeah, good deal. All right, now let's take a look at another cool script. And it is under Render, and it is called Sphere Designer. Now, what's cool about this is if you just want a quickie moon or planet in the background or something, you use you can use Sphere Designer. Um, usually, just start out with marble. You can use others, of course, but I find marble gets a nice. Uh, you get very a high contrast with it. Um, of course, you can change you can change these two colors to anything you want, but. Um, Me, I usually like to color afterwards, or I'm using it at, with atmospheric effects, so that's not quite as useful. It's also a really good starting point if you want to get perspective and and you know how uh, texture wraps around. So if you were going to do, if you could use it as a paint over, like a starting point for that as well. So this is incredibly useful. Um, you could change your rotation and scale of the uh, lights. And the position of them. And of your textures. And you hit render and you get yourself an instant alien moon or something. Uh, I've actually uh, have used this uh, a lot. Um, so that's actually something you should be careful with with any any type of filter or or plugin. Is you got to be careful that you don't end up with something that looks like everyone goes, oh, oh, you use that plugin, yeah. So this is something you got to be aware of. You got to be careful with it, you know. So, but it's really it's a really quick and easy way to create a planet or moon without having to break out some 3D uh, program or something. All right, and the next one I find incredibly useful, and again, it's something I wish was in Photoshop but isn't, and that is Color to Alpha. This is a really awesome plugin. And what does it do? It takes a color and makes it transparent. Uh, us I usually find this useful um, for a lot of different things. Uh, it's just awesome. We can you can uh, make black transparent, or you can make white transparent, or any color in there. Uh, I find black or white uh, easier to deal with. Um, so there we go. You get an instant transparency on the black or white area. Like I said, you can use any color. But if you need uh, transparency on something that has high contrast, this is a really, really great way to go. And so, yeah, another good use for GIMP that you cannot do anything like this in Photoshop. Sure, you could use like some kind of like select color and then delete, but you're going to get pretty, you're going to get terrible results. This is much, much better. Well, that's all for this time. Next time, we'll be going further into the normal map plugin in the GIMP. We'll be making normal maps, bump maps, and specularity maps for Blender. That's all. See you next time.